do this in Dr. Schwell, as a doctor, you have four board certifications, one of which is sleep medicine. So you've spent a lot of time researching how light impacts us as human beings. And I know you're very excited about this topic. The average American spends 93% of our life indoors. That's 87% of our life is inside buildings and another 6% on average inside automobiles. So tell us why you're so excited about this topic and are we going to get some practical tips that we can implement right away? Yeah, thanks Kyle. I, I became excited about this because as I started to learn about what scientists are discovering, it was mind-blowing. I mean, we know about ultraviolet radiation from the sun and its role in producing vitamin D in our bodies, but there's a whole other aspect to the light that we get from the sun and light that comes outside for instance, the visible spectrum and how it affects us, the infrared spectrum and how it affects us, we are now starting to see what scientists are finding is amazing. And beyond the science of this, which we'll talk about, we're gonna give you practical tips to harness that information and actually apply it to your body so that you can help optimize your immune system. And as you'll see, the results of that can also help in things like COVID-19 and, and general infections. But the information in this video, I believe, is so important yeah, are, so. that everybody needs that's to be nice. able to understand this. And that's the reason why I'm so excited to talk to you about light. So to explain why light is so important to the human body, we've got to get down to the cellular level and explain this sort of at the outset. And to do that, I'm going to use an analogy to help explain what I'm talking about. So in every cell of our bodies, we have something called mitochondria. Mitochondria are like the engine in a car. It produces the power, the energy, and for the body, it produces ATP, which is the currency of energy for our body. But just like the engine in your car, it can overheat and it can shut down. And that's a byproduct of what it does. And it's a very similar situation that happens in the mitochondria. The mitochondria takes the food that you eat, the fats, the proteins, the carbohydrates, and it makes the ATP that your body needs. But a byproduct of that is oxidative stress. That's the heat around the engine that if the oxidative stress builds up too much, it can cause problems. So what are some problems you can run into if you have too much oxidative stress? What scientists have discovered and looked at over the years is that there are a lot of consequences to oxidative stress, less optimal health, inflammation, cancer, dementia, diabetes, and learning disabilities have been tied to oxidative stress in the mitochondria and mitochondrial disability. Okay, so mitochondria are in all of our cells, and you've given the analogy that they're like a car, that they can overheat and, and have problems. So a car's got a cooling system. What would be the cooling system, if you will, in our mitochondria? So actually, the body has two different systems to be put in place that takes care of the mitochondria in terms of cooling it down or getting rid of the oxidative stress in the mitochondria, depending on whether it's day or night. And I think that's fascinating. Many of us know about what the cooling system is at night because we've heard of it before. And one of the things that is done is that melatonin, which is one of the strongest antioxidants that has been studied, it actually upregulates the glutathione system, is twice as powerful as vitamin E. Melatonin is secreted at night from the pineal gland, goes into the blood circulation, goes into the cells, and is actively transported in, and then goes into the mitochondria to fulfill its duty to mop up very efficiently these oxidative stress molecules. Okay, let me see if I'm following this. So in the evening, melatonin is released from the pineal gland. And we've all heard that melatonin mm -hmm. can help us sleep. People take melatonin as a sleep supplement. I know it's important for that, but you're saying it also goes into the mitochondria of our cells and combats oxidative stress? That's exactly correct. Okay, so that process works at night how do mitochondria and our cells deal with oxidative stress during the day? Well, that's a very good question because any type of light that hits the human eye is going to shut down the production of melatonin from the pineal gland. And so there has to be a completely different system that is put in place during the day that allows 
cause melatonin to be made in the mitochondria to deal with the oxidative stress. Remember, we said that these hydroxy radicals, these oxygen radicals that are produced in the mitochondria as a result of metabolism can destroy things immediately in its vicinity. So you need to have antioxidants right there on site. And so the question is, is exactly how does this happen during the day? And the answer is that infrared radiation from the sun, which we'll talk about, actually goes into the mitochondria and is producing melatonin on site. This is what the science is now starting to discover, making it very interesting as to how much sunlight are we getting and what happens when we don't get enough sunlight. So is oxidative stress always bad for us? No, oxidative stress can actually be beneficial if it's in the right place. So oxidative stress in the mitochondria is just going to serve to break down the proteins of the electron transport chains, which we'll talk about as we get into this lecture. But it's very important for cells, for instance, like white blood cells, which are responsible for killing bacteria, to have within them the ability to have oxidative burst and oxidative stress. So in certain places, at certain times, oxidative stress can be very beneficial. But in the mitochondria, no. The body needs systems in place to protect the mitochondria because it's doing a very important work. Many of us have heard that not all light from the sun is visible light. So can you break down the solar spectrum for us?
А что же вы плохого видите? Хорошо, а что же, да. Да. Я тоже вот так вот, да, понимаю. Ну, да, ну это... А, вы хотите советскую девочку делать? Постсоветскую, что ли? Видишь, какая ситуация? Да, да, то есть, да, я понимаю, она тебя. Да. Чтобы красота развивалась, правильно? Для души, нет? Чтобы красота развивалась, не чтобы она могла творить детей красивых, добрых, наверное. Не знаю, да, наверное, да. Чтоб солнышко было, нет, нет. Не знаю, что ч так, да, да. Наверное, да. Solar spectrum, which looks at the energy coming from the sun. Uh, sometimes I don't like to use the word light, but I will use it because it's a prisma. Будешь не факт, что у тебя, во-первых, рак не будет легкого, или еще чего-нибудь. Да, даже если ты будешь тихонько будет. То есть, да. Или да, понимает. То есть это не да. Понимаешь, да. Жить тяжело будет, понимаешь? Жить тяжело, да. Не утаишь мышки, да, наоборот, так да. Для красоты сделано, да. Films that light is something that we can see, but clearly there is energy coming from the sun which we cannot see. Да, 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 понимаете. А значит, сами себе так, наверное, нет, наверное, да, просто да. Все остальное, значит, несущественно, и как бы подделка настоящего чего-то. Знаешь, подделка чего-то намного лучше, хуже, не узнаешь, хуже. Ну, правильно, не знаю уж, да. Да. Ну, тем более искусство. Искусство, оно изначально просто artificial просто, и все, да. Но это не значит, что, ну и что, оно не нужно людям, за него деньги не платят. И людям оно, ну, вот если это оно имеет, ну вот наоборот, да. Ну, в каком-то смысле искусство реальности, всех реальностей, да. Но это в мужском только смысле, в профессиональном, да. Ну, наверное. Ну, это она имеет в виду, а тебе так говорит, наоборот. Ну, это было на самом деле. Ну, наоборот, значит, да. Ну и что, и что это мне? Ну, тогда, значит, оно никому не нужно. И надо, и никто не понимает он тебя. Вот это, он на себе говорил, тогда, да, да. Вот это он имеет в виду что это все, да, что все недоумки и занимаются искусством, а надо заниматься чем? Да, то есть, ну хорошо, да, 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 ну, да, да, да. Хорошо, э, при делах выше, да, 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 великое познание, ты вот, да, ты про себя говорил, да, да, да. Ну да, да. Типа, да, ну да, да. Отбранивать население только лишь, да. То есть не разум, да, да, часть образовательного, да, да, да. Ну да, да, да. Ну хорошо, да, ну, да. То есть для недоумков, потом ты подрослел, поумнел, и искусство вообще не надо оказалось. Как я про себя так думаю. Да. А, ну да. Не, мужика можно все, понимаешь? Да, да, да. Другое, это массовое искусство, да? Смысл, хорошо, философия искусства. Это уже определенная тоже философия, что искусство только для масс. Да, то есть это, это тоже позиция, но есть еще и другие позиции. Но, но, но для этого надо, ну вот для этого надо хотя бы образование, для этого надо да, и еще деньги за это получать. Бы, да, как бы, чтобы по пощупать хотя бы, что вообще. Да, да. да, потому что есть биеннале, например, да, и прочее, да, понимаете. Пусть тоже биеннале у тебя, да, 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 понимаете. Да. Ну ладно. Да, да, да. As we look here at the solar spectrum, you'll see that 39%, just 39% of the energy coming from the sun is in the form of visible light. And we can see that here between 400 nanometers and 760 nanometers wavelength. We'll talk about wavelength. And so you can see everything to the right of red is known as infrared because it has a wavelength longer than red. And that is divided up into near infrared and far infrared. We'll talk about this more later. Don't get too concerned about this. But specifically, we're going to talk more about near infrared and its benefits. And that's between 760 nanometers and 1400 nanometers. We'll come back to that. At the other end, all of the 
light, as you can see, that is beyond the purple or violet in this case, ultraviolet, is not seen, but we know that it's important, specifically UVB, is important in making vitamin D. But I want you to notice something very important. 54% of all the energy coming from the sun is in the infrared spectrum. Remember that, we're going to come back to that. Okay, so the sun is putting out a lot of energy, and of that energy, a spectrum of that is visible light. Are there other aspects of visible light that we need to know about at this time? Yeah, so in order for us to give recommendations and for us to be able to measure the effect of light, one of the things that's really important is understanding what lux is. And so we've got an example here where we have a candle, which is one lumen, one meter away from a board, which is one meter by one meter, and that's described as one lux. I'm saying this because we're going to be using lux a lot, so you have to understand that one lux is pretty dim light. In fact, let's talk a little bit about some different examples so you can understand what lux really is. And in this slide here, you can see that one lux is kind of like twilight at night, and that a family living room is about 50 lux, but it can go all the way up to 1,000 if you had an overcast day outside, and if it was a bright and sunny day, that would be around 100,000 or even more lux. So that kind of gives you an idea when we talk about exposing your eyes to light at a certain lux level. This is a good reference point for understanding light and its intensity. With that information now... Ну, то есть, семье, отношения в семье, там, да, тоже здесь, да, понимаю, там. Как хороший, да, 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 ну, это уже от тебя зависит, просто это тоже, понимаете, все, да, да. Ну, это да, да. Ну, да, вот он думал, тебе тоже так, да. да. Ready to talk about да. light and how it affects the human body. This is going to be divided into two parts. The first part is going to be what happens at night, how we divide the night from the day, and how sleep and the circadian rhythm is affected by light. The second part is going to be on how light affects us directly with infrared radiation and the mitochondria. And I think that's going to be the part that for most of you, you've probably never heard before. So stick with us as we go through this. There's going to be a lot of interesting, informative aspects of this talk. But first, let's talk about how sleep and the circadian rhythm is affected by light. So if you've ever been to a concert, you know that the conductor is the one that's conducting the orchestra, and each one of those players in the orchestra is starting at the beginning of their music and playing their instrument. They all have to start at the same time, otherwise the music is not going to sound right. So in the body, there are many different types of processes going on. There is a violet in one portion of the body. There is a tuba going on in another portion of the body, to use that analogy. But to make sure that everything is working in unison, there has to be a conductor, a master clock. And that is known as circadian rhythm. So I want to show you this slide that describes the circadian rhythm. Now, it looks rather daunting, and that's actually part of what I want to show you, is to show you how many things that are going on in the body have to be coordinated. I want you to think of, let's say, Disneyland. You know that you can go to Disneyland in the morning and you can go throughout the day and all of those rides and attractions are running. But you know that as soon as Disneyland closes down at night, and, and I had a friend that used to work at Disneyland, there's so many things that happen behind the scenes and after hours to make sure that the park is ready to go the next day. The trash has to be taken out, things have to be cleaned out. It's a new day that's about to happen. And the same thing happens in the human body. The human body is extremely complex and because of that, there are so many processes that are occurring that it's not just one continuous thing. There are times of the day where certain things tend to happen and times of the day where other things don't. So I wanted to show you here what I'm referring to and just to give you an example of what we talked about with oxidative stress, we can see here that melatonin secretion starts at 2100. That's about 9 o'clock at night. We call that dim light melatonin onset, because if you are watching dim lights, then it's going to basically start to secrete melatonin from the pineal gland. But if you notice, as we go around this cycle, melatonin will stop at approximately 7.30 in the morning. It's interesting because around that time, cortisol levels start to peak. And they go around and finally die out at around the time that melatonin is starting to come on. We'll talk more about that cycle. But if you just look here, you don't need to know this stuff. But you can just see, for instance, that your fastest reaction time 
is around 1530. That's about 330 in the afternoon. We know that your highest alertness is around 10 o'clock in the morning. Your best coordination is around 2.30 in the afternoon. All of these things are happening because there is a master clock that's coordinating all of the smaller clocks to be on at the same time. Okay, Dr. Schwald, a couple questions. Number one, you said melatonin secretion starts at about 9 p.m., but I imagine it's variable from person to person and also, of course, depends on whether or not they're viewing bright light at night. And the second question is, you mentioned the dim light melatonin onset. Is it actually the viewing of dim light that stimulates melatonin release, or is it just the absence of viewing bright lights that actually stimulates melatonin to be released? Yes, both good questions. Dim light melatonin onset is kind of a bad name for it because really it's the absence of light that allows the pineal gland to stimulate and produce and secrete melatonin throughout the blood and the human body. You're right that it may not be nine o'clock in everybody and that's the problem is this circadian rhythm has to fit onto reality. This is a clock that's going on inside your body but the problem can come in is if your clock is not in tune with what reality is on the outside. In other words, there's a certain part of your body, your circadian rhythm, that's attuned to when you should be awake. And if it's not correlating with when the sun is up, you might have some problems. So yes, the circadian rhythm, which is very finely regulated inside the body, but the question is, is it actually in line with what's happening outside the body, what reality is? And that's the question. You mentioned that it's key that our internal clock, our circadian rhythm, is uh, optimally aligned with reality, and that there's all kinds of potential benefits or, and consequences to that. What are some of the specific things that our circadian rhythm regulates? Well, if you look at this list, this is pretty extensive, Kyle. I mean, circulating melatonin, we know as an antioxidant. There's studies that suggest that it can reduce cancer. It reduces cortisol production, which is what you don't want to have at night, which is good. It's an antioxidant, and it promotes sleep. That's just the melatonin aspect. But the circadian rhythm also is used in regulation with peripheral clocks, the feeding, and the fasting rhythms, right? So you're not typically eating at night. You're eating during the day, and so those are coordinated. We have hormones that go throughout the body, like cholecystokinin, leptin, and glutamine. These are involved with diet. These are involved with being hungry and with being satisfied body temperature, glucose metabolism, the pancreas, and you can see some of the other ones there. Vasopressin, which is a blood pressure hormone that determines when your blood pressure should be high and when it should be low. Obviously, you want it lower at night when the body is resting. Acetylcholine is a very good... Слово похоже, да. Вот. Очень надо, понимаешь, это даже в принципе, он тебя понял, может, да. Работать надо просто и не посылать, да. Вот это вот, да. Ну, ну ладно, посанула, дальше что, завтра есть. Завтра можешь набрать сил уже и да, профессиональных, как сказать, да. Вот. Ну вот это имеет в виду, да нет. Нет, я не имею в виду бабки нагрести. Ну, да. Я имею в виду, ну он про себя так думает, да. Смотри, потому что бабки, это то, что вот тебе дали бабки, представь себе, что ты животное. И, ну, какой-то вот, ну, ты в лотерею выиграл, и что у тебя с деньгами произойдет? Ну, или что делать? Бабки дали, но ты их не заслужил, что произойдет? Ничего не произойдет, все, у тебя не будет их скоро, понимаешь? Вот и все, да, понимаешь? Ну, ладно, имеет в виду, да. Или что ты животное, вот, а тебе, тебе что-то дали, вот, представь себе, собаке дать коттедж, что она с ним будет делать? Понимаешь, то есть, ну, поняла тебя. То есть, да, то есть это, ну, бредни человеческие, потому что собаке не нужно этого. Да. Собака это, это, ну, я просто так шучу уже. Собаке дать миллион рублей, что она с ней будет делать? Да, понимаешь, да. Ну, да, не, я понял. Блин, да, Не, это... Надо опираться только на то, что ты заслужил, на то, что ты себе, на свои навыки, да, которые, вот они, это и есть более, больший актив, чем, чем просто деньги, которые тебе дали, понимаешь? Деньги это пассив, умение зарабатывать это актив, умение зарабатывать, э, положившись на себя, 
как, ну, кроме того, как ты, тебе надо, значит, прийти к людям, что-то там сказать, здравствуйте, там пианино поставить, что-нибудь начать играть, как бы, да, ну, хоть куда, понимаешь, к примеру, я тебе просто говорю. То есть это тоже, ну, это тоже навыки определенные, да, ну, да, и так далее, короче, долгий разговор. Да, то есть, ну, да, ну, для этого надо, и главный-то момент, тебе за что деньги, да, за пианино и буду, а тебя как, в каком она у тебя хор, вот и все, если ты, да, вот и все, понимаешь, ну, то есть, ну, то есть, ну, умеем люди, да, ну, типа того, вот я про это и говорю. То есть, да, деньги будете сами. То есть, каких сил и как будешь набираться? Нет, деньги, но экономить денег и уехать куда-то, это бабский вариант, сразу же не мужской, понимает он тебя, да? Научиться зарабатывать и быть на крыле, и учить, научиться тратить даже деньги, расходовать их осознанно, да? Это уже какой-то навык, это уже ближе, ну, это уже, как бы, да, понимаешь. Это уже, значит, меньше родство. Меньше желаю. Это значит, что ты лучше выживаешь, как мужик, понимаешь? А просто жить с деньгами просто это как бы ну, занимается. Ну тогда что вы имеете в виду? Но вот это он не умеет. Деньги, за которые ты отвечаешь, вот ты слово не то сказал, и тебя сработал его любимый тогда. И, и да, да, типа того, да. И, и что ты хочешь сказать? То, что ты не специалист, на другую работу тебя не возьмут. А работать сам по себе, то есть а ты, не, не, да, ты, ты себя не развивал как специалист, он имеет в виду, да, да. Он это имеет в виду, да, да. Нет, в смысле покладистый, что двигаться по это самое, по он про себя говорит. То есть что вы имеете в виду? Специалист это самовыращение. В любой стране мира ты будешь на пианине играть, понимаешь? Это как бы неважно, но я, ну он про себя так говорит просто, да, да, да. Специалист, да, и денег заработаешь, если хорошо играешь, это я тебе точно могу сказать, да. Просто в коридоре где-нибудь. В каком коридоре сумасшедший ненавистный урод? Ну он про себя так говорит, да, ну в коридоре власти. Это не коридор власти, это твоего безделья коридор, твоей беспомощности, да, сам не да, 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 ну я понял, но это не касается, да, да, надо держаться только за, за свои навыки, за себя, как за специалиста, не, не где-то припаяно к чему-то, да, не раба какого-то учреждения или страны даже какой-то, какой а, ну, раба своего дела, это тоже, смотри, взяли тебя там, да, смотри, а что ты имеешь в виду, да, ну, ну, не, ну ничего, ну будь, ну тогда ну, он про себя просто так думает уже, да. Ну то есть навыки, надо что-то уметь. Ну, ну да, да, да. Умение зарабатывать денег музыка, как музыкант, да, типа того. Ну, типа этого, да. Это не беда, даже если ты приехал, у тебя такого умения нет, но это не лучший вариант, потому что лучше сразу же, потому что иначе тебе, смотри, вот ты тратил время как музыкант, ну, какие-то музыкальные деятельности, полуоплачиваемую, да, или около музыкальную, ну там, неважно как скажешь, все словеса. Обучение музыки, например, да. Да, плюс ты импровизация, экстриотация, да. Потом ты раз приехал, и тебе пришлось там какой-то, ну, недостаточный квалификант для чего-то, и ты работаешь 8 часов в Макдональдсе где-нибудь, вообще в Яндексе, вообще без разницы. Какой Яндекс? Я просто. Где ты там найдешь Яндекс в Нью-Йорке? Да я просто, ну, как я взял, каким пешеходом там. Да насрать мне на это! На привод! Не на, квали... на неквалифицированной работе, имбецильный какой-нибудь! Работаешь 8 часов! Ну, 9-10! Сейчас какая нахер разница? Остальное время тратишь на то, чтобы совершенствоваться как музыкант и да, и просто, да. Тратишь на себя, на свою жизнь, на стоит, да. Понимаю, это, это. Я, не, я не думал, что вы все уроды. Кто виноват, что вы не думки все, блин, тупорылые, блин. Что вам в вашей жизни? Да. Да. Я тебе еще раз говорю. Единственная жизнь. У тебя мечта есть, ты мужик, нет, у тебя есть мечта. Ну, так ой, чтобы жить нормально, ну тогда тебе на запад надо. Так получается, если у тебя такая мечта простая, она понимает на тебя. А, ну да, да, да. А ты что, ничего, да, да, уметь ты не хочешь ничего что ли делать? Да, да. Не хочешь быть мастером в чем-то? Не хочешь всех победить или что-нибудь там? Не знаю, я, да. самым умным. Как, ну я всех победить имею в виду, как бы на, на арене бизнеса. Какой политической? Политическая арена я не рассматриваю, это для слабаков все. Да, победить всех на политической арене, это значит, как бы, 
Ничего хорошего это не значит. Это Наполеон, который вечная война, вечный психиатр. Да. Меня это не касается. Я просто... Ну, ну или Махатма Ганди тоже там психиатр. Там, это шутка уже просто была. Это не суть разговора. То есть политика это всегда как бы... Я про политику, потому что... Ну, да, да, да. Я имею в виду дела. А политика, она туда не входит. Да, да. То есть, да, де... ну да, дела это мужество и слабость, которая становится нужной людям, становится силой. Да. Да, ну, ну, да. ну, настоящей силой, то есть человеческой. То есть, если бы и тогда бы эволюция вот таких вот самые высшие существа на планете, ну вот как вот этих в японских мультфильмах были бы какие-нибудь. Ну, да, да, понимаешь, то есть эволюции не надо это все. Самые высшие существа на планете, у которых больше масса мозга, то есть а, а, мускулатура, а, вертикальное хождение и слабая мускулатура, но которые достаточно, чтобы держать тело вертикально и э, для того, чтобы мозги хорошо варили, может даже так, да, наверное. То есть все уж так совсем. Ну тут не важно. Да, да, да. можно да, 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 не важно ну то есть да 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 то есть приезжай туда ну ничего будешь развиваться будешь холопом там бегать да какая тебе разница здесь бегаешь там бегаешь да понимаю да, 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 да. ну это тоже может быть ну ты учти это да понимаю там да. ну да да Что-нибудь тебе надо я скажешь, нет, надо обратно. Да. Ты, наверное, нет, он тебя просто понял. Да. Ну вот это и есть, да, на самом деле, да, это свобода и страна. Да. Место, где можно трудиться. Конкуренты. Да. Ну, они там тоже как тяжело живут, да, понимаешь, да. Ну не знаю, я просто так. сам где сейчас все будет строить вся хлеба не да 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 там где трусь там там все ценится ну ладно ну там диверсити но меня не касается я ничего не так сама сам себя вырастить может ты их просто на он тебя представит говорил это да 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 это не суть да ты для кого-то будешь или то есть да ну не важно ну амбиции свои просто хочу быть клевым музыкантом и все это ну к примеру да ну наоборот так Ну все равно у тебя времени полно, что ты будешь с ним делать-то? Ну ничего, отдашь деньги ее, потом что будешь делать? А пока параллельно отдаешь, все равно у тебя... Ну сколько то есть эти выходные какие-то там и так далее. Наоборот, да, да, да. Семье ничего не надо. С да, семья без тебя обойдется, да. <laughs> семье надо, чтобы ты был <laughs> Кабинет, чтобы у тебя был, да. <laughs> чтобы ты мудрый был. У меня это не... Чтобы ты мужчиной был. Не надо на семью ничего сваливать. Из-за семьи у тебя нет. Не надо на других людей пытаться приложить, что ты недоумок, понимаешь? Потому что это. <laughs> да, понимаю, там просто, да. Ну да, ну что, ну что, я неправильно говорю, что ли? Да. Да. Долгий, ну, наверное, долгий период, да, ну это. Ну да, ну да. Да, да. Просто ты не можешь правильно распорядиться, своим, правильный пример показать. Выстроить, как бы. Не выстроить, чтобы под тебя выстроили отношения. Ты в головах семьи, понимаешь? Да, это понимаете. Типа того, муж спасти их из отношения. Ну да. 
Ну, наверное, вот по этой причине и не только по этой. Потому что ты, ты знаешь этот мир, ты защиты для всех стен, да, Человек мира. Одеваться некуда, все равно мужчина, понимаешь? И всю жизнь так. Постепенно как-нибудь. Постепенно как-нибудь, да, Ладно. Ну, ну вот это, наверное. Ну да. Ну вот нет, вот это, ну да, наверное. Да, наверное. Ну вот это он имеет в виду. А чего мне прикажешь? Прикажешь мне бегать? Жижгается, вот не Ну не надо это все лишнее. Пока у меня, у меня свои Adiponectin, which is involved with adipose tissue and fat, and then of course just overall metabolism regulation, which is going to vary depending on the time of day. So it's really important that the circadian rhythm is in sync and is well regulated. Как делают кашемировый свитер? Кашемир гоби – самый мягкий натуральный текстиль, получают от кочевых скотоводов в монгольских степях. Роскошный текстиль на протяжении веков. Кашемир сохранил свою привлекательность и по сей день. Расположенная в самом сердце Центральной Азии, Монголия уже давно является одним из ведущих производителей качественного кашемира. Долгие холодные зимы Монголии способствуют росту изысканно мягкого, теплого подшерстка у кашемировых коз. С приходом весны пастухи-кочевники осторожно расчесывают кашемир от коз, которые естественным образом начинают сбрасывать это мягкое волокно. Гоби получает этот кашемир непосредственно от скотоводов по всей Монголии. And you asked about consequences. There's been a number of studies <laughs> that, <laughs> <have been laughs> <developed laughs> humans, that when they apply the dysregulation of the circadian rhythm in rodents, we can see problems with body temperature, increased fat, altered immune system, tumor developments, and basically just perturbations of the hormonal homeostasis. In human beings, when they do this prospectively, they show that there are problems with insulin regulation, leptin, and norepinephrine and also increased markers of inflammation and diabetes. So there's a lot of problems when you have dysregulation of the circadian rhythm. You mentioned leptin. What is that? Well, leptin is a hormone that regulates your hunger. There's two hormones there. There's leptin, which makes you... They're viewing bright light at night. And the second question is, you mentioned a dim light melatonin onset. Is it actually the viewing of dim light that stimulates melatonin release? Or is it just the absence of viewing bright lights that actually stimulates melatonin to be released? Yes, both good questions. Dim light melatonin onset is kind of a bad name for it because really it's the absence of light that allows the pineal gland to stimulate and produce and secrete melatonin throughout the blood and the human body. You're right that it may not be nine o'clock in everybody and that's the problem is this circadian rhythm has to fit onto reality. This is a clock that's going on inside your body but the problem can come in as if your clock is not in tune with what reality is on the outside. In other words, there's a certain part of your body, your circadian rhythm, that's attuned to when you should be awake. And if it's not correlating with when the sun is up, you might have some problems. So yes, the circadian rhythm, which is very finely regulated inside the body, but the question is, is it actually in line with what's happening outside the body, what reality is? And that's the question. You mentioned that it's key that our internal clock, our circadian rhythm, is uh, optimally aligned with reality, and that there's all kinds of potential benefits or, and consequences to that. What are some of the specific things that our circadian rhythm regulates? 
Well, if you look at this list, this is pretty extensive, Kyle. I mean, circulating melatonin, we know as an antioxidant. There's studies that suggest that it can reduce cancer. It reduces cortisol production, which is what you don't want to have at night, which is good. It's an antioxidant, and it promotes sleep. That's just the melatonin aspect. But the circadian rhythm also is used in regulation with peripheral clocks, the feeding and the fasting rhythms, right? So you're not typically eating at night, you're eating during the day, and so those are coordinated. We have hormones that go throughout the body like cholecystokinin, leptin, and ghrelin. These are involved with diet. These are involved with being hungry and with being satisfied. Body temperature, glucose metabolism, the pancreas, and you can see some of the other ones there. Vasopressin, which is a blood pressure hormone that determines when your blood pressure should be high and when it should be low. Obviously, you want it lower at night when the body is resting. Acetylcholine is a very major neurotransmitter. Cortisol, we've talked about already. Insulin is involved in diabetes. Adiponectin, which is involved with adipose tissue and fat. And then, of course, just overall metabolism regulation, which is going to vary depending on the time of day. So it's really important that the circadian rhythm is in sync and is well regulated. And you asked about consequences. There's been a number of studies that have been done both in rodents and in humans that when they apply the dysregulation of the circadian rhythm in rodents, we can see problems with body temperature, increased fat, altered immune system, tumor developments, and basically just perturbations of the hormonal homeostasis. In human beings, hormone, the creus, and you can see some of the other ones there, vasopressin, which is a blood pressure hormone, that it, which is good. It's an antioxidant and it promotes sleep. That's just the melatonin aspect. But the circadian rhythm also is used in regulation with peripheral clocks, the feeding and the fasting rhythms, right? So you're not typically eating at night, you're eating during the day, and so those are coordinated. We have hormones that go throughout the body like cholecystokinin, leptin, and ghrelin. These are involved with diet. These are involved with being hungry and with being satisfied body temperature, glucose metabolism, the pancreas, and you can see some of the other ones there. Vasopressin, which is a blood pressure hormone that determines when your blood pressure should be high and when it should be low. Obviously, you want it lower at night when the body is resting. Acetylcholine is a very major neurotransmitter. Cortisol, we've talked about already. Insulin is involved in diabetes. Adiponectin, which is involved with adipose tissue and fat. And then, of course, just overall metabolism regulation, which is going to vary depending on the time of day. So it's really important that the circadian rhythm is in sync and is well regulated. And you asked about consequences. There's been a number of studies that have been done both in rodents and in humans that when they apply the dysregulation of the circadian rhythm in rodents, we can see problems with body temperature increased fat, altered immune system, tumor developments, and basically just perturbations of the hormonal homeostasis. In human beings, when they do this prospectively, they show that there are problems with insulin regulation, leptin, and norepinephrine, and also increased markers of inflammation and diabetes. So there's a lot of problems when you have dysregulation of the circadian rhythm. You mentioned leptin. What is that? Well, leptin is a hormone that regulates your hunger. There's two hormones there. There's leptin, which makes you feel satisfied, and there's ghrelin, which increases your need for food. You feel more hungry, basically. And so when you're not sleeping at the correct time, when your circadian rhythm is off, you're going to feel hungry and probably eat more food. If you have too much ghrelin or not enough leptin, you're going to also feel hungry to eat more food. So there's a problem there when your circadian rhythm is not in sync. So again, you've mentioned the importance of matching our circadian rhythm with what's going on outside in the world. So how, how do we do that? What are some strategies that allow us to do that effectively? Well, what you have to understand is that the body is hardwired to be able to take information from the environment and to change its internal circadian rhythm so that it's in sync with the environment. And this slide here tells exactly how that happens. So as you can see here, when light hits the eye and specifically goes to the retina, and I want to specifically say that we know that light that goes to the retina is hitting rods and cones, and those go to neurons, which then project back here to the occipital lobe, and that's where we actually can understand and visualize and see things. What I'm about to talk about is a completely different section of the retina 
and it does it in a completely different way. The first thing you have to understand here is that there is light that we see that we can describe. What I'm about to talk to you about is light that comes into the eye that goes to a completely different part of the brain, and it's not light that you're conscious of. It's light that you're unconscious of, and that's important to understand. This light that's coming into the eye is not going to rods and cones, but instead this thing called intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells. Now these are ganglia. They are in particularly in the inferior portion of the retina at the back of the eye, and that's important to understand because usually light that comes from the superior visual field when it hits the lens is going to be projected down into the inferior retina. So this is going to be stuck in the superior visual field. It is then projected to something called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Now this is the master clock. This is the portion of the brain that makes sure that everything is working in sync. This is the conductor of that orchestra that I showed you at the beginning. When light comes in, it's telling the suprachiasmatic nucleus that it is daytime that it is during the day that this must be coming from the sun, this is how we are hardwired, and because of that, there is a specific neuron that shuts down production in the pineal gland of melatonin. And so light coming into the eye goes to the intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells, that's a long word there, and it gets projected not to where you would actually see consciously you would see light, but rather to the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which tells it that it's daytime, and therefore tells the pineal gland, do not make melatonin, because melatonin in the blood system is a signal to the cells that it's nighttime and it's time to go to bed. And so this is how the system, the circadian rhythm, understands that it is daytime versus nighttime. Now, there's actually more to this because obviously it's possible for you to be out of sync. So the question then becomes, how does the brain and the circadian rhythm inside your brain adjust to reality? So I want to show you how the circadian rhythm in your brain can be shifted one way or the other depending on the external sources of light. So I want you to imagine that you're on a desert island that uh, you have no sort of extrinsic sources of light and you're perfectly aligned. You can see here that the night of the circadian rhythm is actually aligned with night, which is reality, and also the daytime is perfectly aligned with reality, which is day. That's the ideal. In our situation, if we were to, for instance, expose our eyes to the screen or our iPhone or anything like that, what could happen is, is that we would start to expose our eyes to light at a time where we would not normally be experiencing light. And so what the circadian rhythm wants to do in that situation is it's thinking that it's still daytime. And as a result of that, it's going to shift itself over to that to encompass and capture that because it thinks that it's too early. And so you can see here very clearly that exposure to light at night after the sun goes down has a tendency to delay your circadian rhythm. Now that can cause problems as we've talked about before, but the biggest problem that you might notice yourself consciously is that even though you're at night here, your circadian rhythm is not ready for sleep, and so you might actually get the symptom of insomnia. And also, similarly, it's day here at the beginning, and you're still in the middle of your sleep, and so you might get hypersomnia in the morning. And you can see here that it's important to understand that avoiding light especially late in the circadian rhythm, as the, after the sun has gone down, before you go to bed, avoiding it can prevent this type of shifting from occurring. Interestingly also, is exposing your eyes to light here in the beginning of the day can help anchor your circadian rhythm and prevent it from sliding later and later because of viewing of light in the late hours. But I will say that making sure that you expose your eyes to bright light in the morning is not a substitute for avoiding bright light in the evening. Okay, to summarize, if I get good sunlight in the morning, that can help anchor my circadian rhythm to reality. And then if I avoid a lot of light or screen time in the evening, um, that can help kind of reaffirm to my circadian rhythm that it's time to wind down, it's nighttime, and time to start stimulating melatonin release. Do I have that right?
Yeah, you actually have it exactly right. And I would add a little bit more to that. A couple of things that you should be aware of is that if we go back to this master clock picture again, you'll notice that light is coming in and it's the inferior portion as we talked about. So it's really important to avoid bright light, especially high up in your visual field. So ceiling lights, things of that nature. I would say if you have to use lights, using lighting on the floor or using lighting low on the wall, those night light types of things would be much better. Also realize that the peak sensitivity of those intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells are around 460 to 484 nanometers, which is basically in the blue section. Now, you may have heard of blue blockers and even programs on your screens and computers that can reduce the amount of blue light because this is the type of light that specifically is going to excite those intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells. But Kyle, just to be perfectly honest, it's any kind of light that's really going to stimulate it. It's just this blue light that seems to be the worst at stimulating those ganglion receptors. And remember, when they do, they are going to tell the suprachiasmatic nucleus, as we've shown here, to shut down melatonin production. And the point is that melatonin is the coolant that makes sure that the engine is running smoothly and that antioxidants are kept to a minimum. So you really want to have that melatonin production at night, and you don't want light shutting it down. You mentioned not suppressing melatonin release is key for the antioxidant effect, but it also seems key just to initiate sleep, right? Doesn't melatonin have tremendous benefit in initiating sleep for us as well? Yes, it does, actually. And many people take melatonin as a supplement orally to help with that as well. But generally speaking, you don't need to have a melatonin supplement to have the onset of sleep, and that's because our pineal gland makes its own melatonin and secretes it, and it's a message to the body. This melatonin goes throughout the entire circulatory system, and it tells the cells, it's a way of mentioning to them that it's time to go to sleep. And melatonin production, as you say, is a signal for sleep. There's a lot on this slide that I want to ask you about, and I think it's super interesting that the angle of light, not only the intensity of light, but the angle of light has an impact on whether our melatonin is released and we feel sleepy and ready for sleep or not. And presumably, is this because we've evolved as humans to, if anything, be around a fire at night? And that might also explain why the peak sensitivity for blocking melatonin is between 460 and 484, which is that blue light spectrum. So in theory, low light, that's predominantly red light, far away from that blue light spectrum, should not inhibit that melatonin too much. Is that right? It does seem as though a fire was made specifically, or maybe we were made specifically for the fire, because if you notice, a fire is generally away from the blues and more into the reds and the oranges, and it's usually in front of us, it's down low. And so that's exactly where we would expect to have the least impact in terms of melatonin secretion or not at night. So in other words, a fire sitting in front of you, it's going to be reflecting on the superior retinal ganglion cells where there's not a lot of these intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells. And so the melatonin production should still stay relatively good. And also, as we mentioned, fire is typically red, oranges, and not the type of thing that we would see with blue light, etc. Interestingly also, is at sunset, when we see sunset, the sun is going down, typically the sun is reddish, it's orange, we're not getting a lot of that blue light. And so it's almost like the body is getting ready for sleep, melatonin is starting to come on, depending on the time of day. Very interesting uh, dichotomy that we see there with uh, fires versus blue light. Dr. обучение в открытии инвестиций. Пробую инвестировать в биржевые фонды. Ну, пассивный доход еще никто не отменял. А это недорого? Нет. Это как, не знаю, купить пакет молока. 
Нужно инвестировать от 100 рублей, а можно купить ценные бумаги разных стран и отраслей на 1000 рублей. Идеально для новичка. А почему не банковский вклад? Потенциальный доход выше, чем по вкладу. В любой момент можно пополнить или продать. Налоговые льготы. А еще выгоднее открыть инвестиционный счет и получать гарантированную до 52 тысяч рублей ежегодно от государства. Поняла, поняла. Вижу, что ты разбираешься. А на каком сайте инвестируешь? Да все в приложении. Скачай открытие инвестиций и попробуй сама. Открытие инвестиций. Любые цели достижимы. Exposure automatically in your bedroom 
from about zero initially to about two to three hundred lux over a one to two and a half hour period of time can also improve seasonal affective disorder as we can see here again with this meta-analysis where overall there was an effect size of these patients. So it's slowly bringing the lights up and there's actually lights that you can program to do this sort of thing. I want to demonstrate what one of these dawn simulation lights looks like. And Dr. Schwell never has to use one of these because he lives down in sunny Southern California. But um, you can see it's got a one on it. Now it's going up to eight, 10. So it's got from one to 20 for this particular light. And you can program this so it simulates dawn over an hour or over two hours or whatever you want. And this little guy is a light made specifically for seasonal affective disorder. I'll turn this on here. It's really bright. потреблять это вообще не мужское свойство то есть ну, мы, ну, он на себя так говорит просто ну, то есть потреблять просто да понятно по этой говорите this one gives off 10,000 watts as long as you're within 15 inches of the light source I've ну ты перепод... представляешь, как, какая, какая трагедия, то есть если, если организм не отвечает у тебя, какой еще организм, ненормальный урод, блин, если он про себя так говорит, да. 20 минут или so in the morning, um, working on my computer or reading with this light coming from overhead, and uh, again, being within 15 inches of it. Um, Dr. Schwell, are there any other um, mental or psychiatric conditions that can be potentially treated with light. Well, the yes, Kyle, in 2017, this paper was published looking at can proper light therapy affect bipolar depression? And this study showed that in 46 patients, which were randomized to placebo versus 7,000 lux bright white light versus 50 lux dim red placebo light around 12 o'clock to 2.30 in the afternoon, 15 minutes per day and then building up to one hour per day by week four you can see here that by week four there was a significant increase in the patients that were in remission from bipolar depression that's a good thing as, as the number goes up that was good and you can see that as the amount of light that was given to the patient increased after week four there was a much higher percentage of patients that were in remission who got the 7,000 lux bright white light in the afternoon that's really interesting. Are there any conditions that a dawn simulating light helps with? Yes, actually, there was a paper that was published in 2010 that looked at artificial dawn for two weeks, 250 lux or 50 lux versus control, and what they saw was a significant reduction in sleep inertia. In other words, it was easier to get up, feeling like you were tired and you wanted to stay in bed. In the 50 lux and the 250 lux versus no dawn at all. And you can see here that very similar intervention, the dawn stimulating light, when they did this for 30 minutes, 30 minutes prior to waking up and then 20 minutes after waking up, compared to a very small amount of light, they were able to show that this dawn simulating light improved subjective well-being, mood, and actually cognitive performance as compared with the dim light and the minimal blue light that they had as controls. I would just say though that this artificial light, this dawn simulating light, is really just a way of capturing what you would normally have if you were to go outside and expose your eyes to bright lights outside early in the morning. So all of this is really to show that stimulating your eyes with bright light from the sun is very beneficial. You mentioned earlier that not only melatonin but cortisol is key in regulating our circadian rhythm. Can you tell us more about cortisol? So cortisol comes up early in the morning, uh, usually around 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning, and then tapers off 
as it goes around to midnight. And cortisol is actually the thing that sets in motion the timing of melatonin.